couple seasons of seven and nine and 14, four and 12 is, doesn't represent any aspect of our goals. It's not where we, we have committed the franchise. It's not where we set our standards and our bar and the results are not acceptable. And this is a results oriented business. It is very disappointing, you know, disappointing for our fans, disappointing for everybody, certainly myself. On a couple of occasions when asked the question, where did they fall short? And he just simply said, wins, because it's all about wins. I think any time you're going to be faced with a decision involving a coach change and a GM change, it, it's just, it's, it's not comfortable, it's not easy. You want to make sure you're doing it for all the right reasons. And I think in Arthur's case, it wasn't the expectation of our football team, our players, our coaches, certainly our fan base, and that just drove the decision to be now. We've begun this journey now with uh, hiring a new general manager, a new, uh, new head coach. I expect every one of these people coming in to have a plan, uh, to have a plan that will end up leading to a championship. Good morning, Coach. How are you? I'm great. I appreciate you having me on. Oh, absolutely. Well, so thank you for being with us. Coaches really come by resume to me. You know, they've got to prove to you that they've been able to do it. They've been able to show that they can be successful with the formula that they've used, whether that's as a coordinator, as a position coach, whatever it may be. You want to look back to that history. You want to look to the people that they coached. You want to talk to those people. One of the things I like to do when you're researching coaches, I like to talk to three players that played for that coach. And I like to understand from those players' perspective, you know, how did that coach get you better and why? And I think you can learn a lot from that. Give me four or five things that you think make a successful head coach, Arthur. Yeah, I mean, here's kind of my vision of the head coach. We want the most professional, unselfish, well-conditioned, toughest and physical team. So, okay, so what does that mean? We got to go get and preach an unselfish culture. Is the accountability of holding your best players accountable and talking about it's about the team and get over yourself. And I think when you sit there and you want to preach it, you want to be a physical team, you can't say that and then you not go acquire physical players. And certainly you can't say that in front of these guys and not go implement that on Sunday. Because I've seen too many coaches go over there and they don't they do not do what they tell you they're going to do. That's the biggest thing. We're going to treat you how you treat the team and you're going to hold your best players accountable. That's how you get guys to buy in in pro, pro football. Let's go, man! Let's go! Put the ball away! All the way. We're all gonna eat today. We gotta keep the tempo going. Keep the tempo up. Keep pounding and working over and over. On the personnel side, I think you know you're looking for, in my mind today, a strategic analytic mind that's really looking to make a difference in the personnel side. Can you find a way to take the data you have, the information you have, and get an edge? It's not easy, uh, but it is something that, that we will look to do. You know, how you do anything is how you do everything. I've been there 18 years, and so there's a different passion with my job. You know, I believe in growing, um, growing and developing um, your people in the building, growing and developing, drafting and developing, obviously, your players. But when you have people that you can get an organization and, and when you have a philosophy of growth and development, there's a bigger purpose to it. So me being the example of somebody that can be somewhere for such a long time, that's what you strive for in an organization major change like this, where you're going to change the general manager, the head coach, um, you're going to give them great control over the roster. They need to. You'll want them to come in, you'll want them to examine the roster, to understand those players, to understand the individuals, understand the players, where they may be in their careers, and then make recommendations and, and take action based on that. And new today, the Atlanta Falcons announce its new general manager. Here he is right here. 40-year-old Terry Fontenot comes to Atlanta after spending 16 seasons with division rival New Orleans. So welcome, Terry Fontenot, to the team. The Falcons have also found their head coach. That's right, MJ. The Falcons announcing this afternoon that they have agreed to terms with the former Titans offensive coordinator Arthur Smith as their new head coach. He may have been the hottest candidate on the market interviewed or requested to interview for all seven head coaching vacancies. He's creative on offense, which as you know, those are always attractive qualities to head coaching openings. So Matt Ryan, not that much younger than Arthur Smith, now has a new head coach and the job for Arthur Smith is to revitalize this offense. After a year in which they left far too many points on the field, they need to get back in the mix in the NFC South soon. Arthur Smith is their choice to lead them there. 
lot of work ahead for those two guys. Probably going to have very little sleep the next few weeks. Probably going to have a whole lot of phone calls and text messages, whether it's congratulatory or calling people to build out their staffs. Those two will work side by side to build this organization back up to what the owner, Arthur Blank, wants and feels like the fans of Atlanta deserve. Today is the uh, start of a new era for us. We have uh, obviously a new coach, a new general manager, and our search was uh, was extensive. And, uh, and we're thrilled that we were the number one choice we made was uh, Coach Smith from Tennessee. And he's got a great background, great credentials, uh, had a ton of experience at Tennessee. So everything is kind of hits you and you go through this interview process get the job, I mean, your mind just starts moving a million. It's like a new adrenaline, new energy. And, and it's just, like I said, it's like a shot of espresso every morning when I wake up right now. I just want to thank Arthur Blank, Rich McKay, and the whole Falcons organization for providing me this opportunity to be the head coach of the Atlanta Falcons. It's an unbelievable opportunity and a, and a dream come true. Now, there were a lot of teams who had interest in you, Coach. But what was it about the Falcons for you? It was everything from the organization from top down, from Arthur Blank to Rich McKay. Uh, obviously being in the city of Atlanta, it was all attractive and we just felt like it was a great fit for us. For those who don't know your father, Fred Smith, uh, he is the founder and CEO of FedEx. Now Falcons fans probably hope that they will deliver, that you will help them deliver uh, another winning season to Atlanta. On that note, I will see myself out, coach. But thank you for joining us. Thank you for having me. I called my dad. You know, he's a guy I call late night on the way home from work over the years as they're doing this. and. And so that was, that was the first person I called. His father is the founder of FedEx. He's also a, a war hero. This is a guy that spent time in Vietnam, led men into battle. And you're talking about leaning on a dude that built a multi-million dollar, billion dollar operation at FedEx. How about the fact that he just led guys into battle? That's a pretty good one <laughs> to be able to lean on as well. All the lessons he's taught me and my brothers and sisters is about chasing your dream, working hard, being humble. Uh, you know, understanding the whole the whole process that things don't happen overnight. It takes time. Anything good, you know, to sustain, it's gonna, it's gonna take a long time. Things don't happen just just overnight. I'm so excited to have the opportunity to be the coach here. I'm excited to work with Terry Fontenot and have a collaborative effort to build this franchise and this football team going forward 2021 and beyond. We're very fortunate. Terry was one of the leading candidates. You know, we think he's really one of the bright, young, you know, minds in the NFL today. But philosophically, their culture and core values are really the same. And I think these two gentlemen uh, really shared all that together. And they did it behind the scenes before we even were uh, discussing it with them. Terry was the, the first one they interviewed. And Terry Fondolo talked about, hey, I went out and I interviewed these guys myself before even Arthur them said anything to me about it. That tells me he has the initiative to go out and see what he likes about these coaches. So I thought that was impressive as well. It's kind of been a, a whirlwind and a little overwhelming in a good way. And now I'm getting excited because I got to, I just saw my office. So I know where my office is now. And that's what I'm excited about too. I want to be able to come in the building and really get to work. 18 years ago, Mickey Loomis pulled in a 22 year old kid. <clears throat> He got pretty choked up today. So you could see how important Mickey Loomis was in developing him, taking a chance on him as a marketing intern way back when, when he was at Tulane in college and growing him up through the ranks, teaching him basically everything that he knows. My goal isn't to be a general manager. That's not my goal. Like I'm not just trying to be a general manager anywhere I can be a general manager. My goal is to be a part of an organization that, that I feel good about and then I know we can win championships. So that made, got me excited about this job. And every step of the way, I really felt really good about it and really good about the opportunity. It's football and family. That's what I do, that's it. My faith and my principles, it, it has to be interlaced in everything I do. And, and so it, you, wanna, you wanna do things the right way on a daily basis within your job. Whatever you're doing, whatever God has called you to do, do it with passion, do it with intensity, focus on the details. It, 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 how you do anything is how you do everything. How you do anything is how you do everything. That stuck in my eyes. I said, wow, that, that's powerful. If you watched their press conference, you saw him bring his kids on there. You saw he talked about how excited they were. He talked about now there's going to be a bunch of Louisiana Falcons fans now. That kind of stuff tells you what kind of person a guy is. 
like they bled black and gold since they were born, but now they bleed black and red and, and they're ready to come and support dad and, and be a part of the city. Kate, who's your favorite player? Uh, Julio James. Uh, good answer. <laughs> we want to win in, uh, in 2021. I believe you can win in this league and win very quickly. And I believe with the roster, we can do that. It, with respect to uh, expectations and a go forward, we expect to be a really good team right away. I go back and I look at 2007 and 2008, right? And you look at those years and you say, okay, Michael Vick was the quarterback. Bobby Petrino was the coach. Michael um, got indicted and left. Bobby left. We had an interim coach. Uh, we had problems. And uh, in 2008, we brought Matt Ryan on and we went to the playoffs. Today at the Georgia Dome, the Atlanta Falcons start their 44th season in the NFL fresh and new. A new rookie quarterback in Matt Ryan and a new head coach in Mike Smith. Turner gets it again, going right, cuts left, open field at the 45, 50, Lions territory, headed for the right sideline, they're not going to catch him. All right, Arthur, Mike Brown here. Was our expectations as high uh, as they were this year or maybe next year? No. For 2008, they weren't, but we exceeded them. And so because in this league, you can win. And with our, with our talent and our base of talent, we know we can win. First impression for me are everything. And both those guys uh, kicked it straight through the uprights and uh, maybe the first touchdown of the year for me, for sure. <laughs> I've spoken to Terry, but we, we share the same vision. We have the same values. Uh, it won't be groupthink, but, but Terry and I, it'll, it'll be an ultimate partnership as, as we look to build this team in the short term and the long term. I would say that the first steps are obviously me and Arthur communicating a lot, uh, again, on, on our vision, uh, making sure we're aligned, and, and really discussing the roster here and how we're going to move forward. It's, it's self-analysis, and then we can have our plan moving forward. How do they win? How do they win big? How do they consistently win? How do you maintain that and sustain it? Well, for Falcon fans, we've been saying this. It, it's, it's a time of hope which gives us a little bit more of a better feeling as we move forward. You want to be the most professional, unselfish, well-conditioned, toughest physical football team in the league. And in order to do that, you're going to have to find tough players and unselfish players. And I think that we're going to play to the strengths of the team, and we're going to be flexible. But we're going to do it in all three phases. And we're going to have guys that are great teammates and understand how to adapt. The accountability that they talked about, accountable, being accountable for their actions, making their players accountable, their best players accountable. Holding players accountable. It's something within a locker room environment that's not talked about. What I do know is he is about ball, and I like that. We're going to be the, the, the smartest, most detailed, hardest working staff because that's what we want in players. We want our team to be smart, tough, competitive. Um, we're going to make sure we're, we're detailed in the process and we're doing everything we can and turning over every stone to make this team as competitive as we can. That's what we're going to do and we're going to do it the right way. Um, we're going to do it the right way. We're going to build for long-term success. We're going to do everything we, we can do um, to really build this team the right way.